today I'm going to be talking about a very special concept uh, which is going to be about determining the nature of your spouse, determining what they're going to be like. And if you're already married, this could actually clue you in on why your spouse behaves in a certain way and which planet is actually responsible for that. And based on that, you can perform the remedy. I'm also going to give my own set of remedies, which you may perform to ensure harmony in your relationship. Now, most people don't have the benefit of knowing the other person all too well before marriage. And uh, that happens either because their marriage is set up by parents or it, it it's mostly an arranged marriage. Or if it's love, then it's probably because uh, they have seen something on the surface and missed the core persona or the deeper reality that marriage entails with that person. Sometimes things go wrong and we're left with no other alternative but to part ways, but sometimes we're trapped in that relationship. And even an exit becomes extremely difficult. For most others, there's a possibility to avoid falling in that pitfall and take remedial measures before the wedlock. Okay, so that's what this video is all about. And I'm just giving you the very basic introduction to this video. So let's get started, guys. Now, we all know that Venus represents the wife in a male horoscope, whereas Mars represents the husband in a woman's horoscope. Now, why am I talking about the characteristics of these planets when actually the planet that's placed in the seventh house or the first house is what determines my fate with other people? And the answer is that these placements are pretty straightforward. Uh, and I thought I would make a video on something different instead of making a video on planets in the seventh house, which would be too trite and obvious. So I thought I'll talk something uh, different that many are not aware of. And that is with regards to conjunctions. You see, things become a little bit complicated when we have conjunctions. So today, I'm going to cover conjunctions with Venus, conjunctions with Mars and see how that can clue you in on your spouse's persona. Now, the beauty of this video is that we're only going to look at conjunctions or aspects. We're only looking at the basics. We're not looking at planets and houses or planets and signs. First, we have conjunction. Then we have the Rashi that's going to affect this conjunction. And then we have the house that's going to affect this conjunction. But here, we're only concerned about the conjunction itself and not the signs or the house in which it is placed. Because remember, it's not just the seventh house or the seventh lord or the planet that's occupying these houses and the sign that they are in which will matter. Karakas have their own relevance in deciding the relationship dynamics, but when they're not alone or when they're afflicted by other planets, that's where things become hard to understand and change. So although we're only going to scratch the surface, yet this is going to unravel the very core persona of your spouse, of your partner. Uh, so it becomes all the more important uh, to look at the, the, these conjunctions because they go to the very root of their persona, their very foundation. For this, we're only going to look at Venus conjunction or Mars conjunction. Now, I know that this may not be for everyone because not everyone has a Venus conjunction or you may not have a Mars conjunction. But of course, there's a possibility that you have an aspect on Venus or an aspect on Mars, even though conjunction and aspects are, uh, uh, are slightly different concepts. It could still work for you. And when I say Venus conjunct some planet, you can also consider it in terms of aspecting that planet or that planet aspecting Venus. We're looking for mutual aspects. Now, usually I would not want conjunctions. Too many conjunctions only adds a lot of confusion. But based on my experience, based on what I've seen, based on near about 400 to 500 charts, I've compiled uh a possible list of qualities that your spouse is probably going to have and you pretty much can guess what that's going to be as I speak about it but remember you can always use this 
interchangeably with Mars or Venus, and that's what I wanted to convey. Even though you're a female, you can also look at Venus in your chart to see what your spouse is going to be like in terms of harmony, because Venus represents harmony. And if you're a man, you can always look at Mars to see how courageous your spouse is going to be by looking at Mars conjunction in your chart. So it becomes very important to consider both conjunctions regardless of gender, but specifically Venus for a man and Mars for a woman. Please be informed that I'll be doing Mars and Venus conjunction in a man's horoscope and the same conjunction for a woman's horoscope. And there may be some slight variations between the both. So predictions on these accounts are gender specific. All right. So let's get started. Let's say you have Venus and Sun together. Now, Sun is a planet of authority, planet of respect. So when Venus conjoins Sun, Venus will be very dignified. Venus will ignore the trivial errors or mistakes that the spouse is going to make. They're not all that concerned about the small things that happen in life which could ruin their happiness. Venus Sun conjunction will make the spouse interested in those things that really matter, which is being creative, being an artist, uh, interested in the material aspects of life, in making money, in music, in being an actor, or any anything which gives them an opportunity uh, to express themselves. And that self-expressive trait will gain them a lot of popularity. They may also be coming from a wealthy background. They may be coming from a house of authority. And I'm talking about your spouse. So your spouse may be coming from a house where people, by and large, have a reputation in society, have a certain status that commands respect. Sun is also a planet of good health, pride. But the negative side of this conjunction is that this conjunction may give pitta to your spouse. They may suffer from pitta-related complaints like ulcers, acid reflux, jaundice, vision-related issues. So what can we do? What remedy can we expect? It's very important for you to find the root cause behind these issues, and that could be anything from being lifestyle-related issues to your emotions, to your diet. So if you're looking for dietary changes, I would suggest that you avoid sour foods like tamarind. Avoiding sugar as well is a very important uh, change that you must bring into your life in order to see better health and uh, a reduction in your pitta-related complaints. For your mindset, I would suggest, and when I say for your mindset, I'm talking about your spouse. Uh, for your spouse's mindset, I would say that they should find a way to balance their energy in terms of jealousy and anger. And that requires uh, a great deal of mental acceptance. And one of the ways they can do this is by consider fasting on Fridays and Sundays. Although that may be a bit extreme for some people, it is one of the best remedies to rebalance these energies in them. If you can't really change your uh, mental attitude, you could at least rebalance the energies in you by observing these fasts. So if you have, uh, let's say, if you have Venus plus Moon, Venus and Moon will give your spouse an interest in traveling. Spouse will be emotional and sensual by nature. They would crave for security in life. They may also come from wealthy and influential families, but this conjunction will also give misunderstanding with their mother-in-law. And the other negative problems associated are that they can be very fickle-minded, very irritable at times, especially at times of problems and crises. They wouldn't know how to approach that problem. They panic very quickly, and that sense ripples across the family, disturbing the harmony of everyone around them. They may also suffer from respiratory complaints like seasonal cold, flu, cough. This could be due to weather or uh, contamination of uh, water, which they can't help but consume because they're traveling all the time. 
and that may not be in sync with their immunity. So these uh, these things can be recurring themes in their life. Your spouse may also be very soft-spoken. They may be very charming, very gentle-minded. Uh, they would definitely want to be harmonious in any relationship. Uh, and when I say relationship, I'm talking about their outside world and how they interact with other people. So basically, they don't like confrontation because both Venus as well as Moon, they're both soft planets. The last thing they want is confrontation. The last thing they want is a fight, and they're very sensitive. Unless, of course, there's some aspect or uh, some affliction to this conjunction, which is going to change the dynamics of how they behave with other people. And that is the reason why you can see if this conjunction is negative, that it can make them very crafty, very scheming, and deceitful. Uh, but they're going to uh, definitely be facing a lot of mood swings in life. Now, what kind of remedy can we expect? Venus and Moon conjunction, I would suggest that you need to cut down on excesses in food. Uh, your spouse needs to find a way to control their taste buds not going after tasty foods alone. Look at the nutritional benefit alongside. That's more important. Drinking warm water at all times. Citrus fruits can actually be one of the best remedies for Venus and Moon conjunction in case of facing frequent respiratory infections. And other remedies can be chanting the Lakshmi Mantra, any Lakshmi Mantra, because Lakshmi can bring corrections to both the Moon as well as Venus. Okay, now let's move on to Venus and Mars conjunction. Venus and Mars conjunction will give a very straightforward person as a wife. Even from the get-go, they may have walked up straight to you and proposed the marriage. There's someone who, who's very bold, very direct in their speech. And they're going to be stubborn with their attitude and that may actually make them appear disrespectful but in reality they do not they do not mean any disrespect and this conjunction can for that reason give quarrels with the husband because the wife, wife is uh very proud of herself and their uh, and and their uh voice is commanding by nature and it's not their fault it's it's just that they can't help but be that way. Okay, now let's look at the health-related issues connected to this conjunction. And here this conjunction can give problems with the heart, problems with blood pressure. It could be both high or low, and one of the best ways to calm this person down uh, is through flattery. If you can flatter this person, it's going to be very easy for you to carry on for the rest of your life with that person. I think that is the best remedy to avoid quarrels in any relationship, whether you have Venus and Mars conjunction or you have Venus conjunct any other planet. Okay, so let's now look at Venus and Mercury. This conjunction will give your spouse intellectual qualities, intellectual abilities. They will have a very high IQ. They can speak well. They may be interested in writing and being a publisher or an author. Uh, they may be very social. They can manage really difficult situations in life, especially financial situations. And they would give equal treatment to everybody in your family. They would uh, feed anyone and everyone who enters their doorstep. Ironically, Although this is a planetary combination indicating knowledge and intellectual ability, there may not be much of an educational pursuit in their life. But your spouse is going to be very intelligent. The downside, however, is that your spouse could also suffer from accusations by you. So avoid doing this because that's going to give the both of you a lot of suffering, mental agony, something that you would carry that resentment for a long time in life not just you even your spouse is going to carry forward 
that resentment and when it piles up when there is an arrears of resentment it's going to give them many different problems so you should at all costs avoid picking their name anywhere and everywhere and and play the blame game right don't do that also this conjunction may give your spouse skin diseases and there's good and then there's going to be uh different kinds of skin diseases that this person may experience all throughout their life it could be psoriasis it could be alopecia it could be uh, dandruff so if your spouse is actually facing this then try and remedy your venus and mercury and also be attentive to their health concerns especially with regards to the skin venus mercury conjunction will also give a business mentality to you more than your wife now remedies for this conjunction for health concerns the remedy may be with regards to addressing um, neurological issues like anxiety depression anger mental health conditions and one of the best ways to avoid this is to keep your spouse cheerful at all times how do you do that you do that by talking to them by communicating with them by being together by spending more time with them give them your time and that could be uh, very well be one of the best remedies for this conjunction okay moving on we have Venus and Jupiter conjunction here your wife will be very polite wife is going to be pious in nature Venus and Jupiter conjunction may at times make you or your spouse to accept other faiths other religions the spouse is also going to be a devoted person and also someone who can guide you to better prospects in life spouse will bring honor both to both to her mother's house as well as her mother-in-law's house but the negative side of this is that the person can suffer due to body fat obesity oh and this conjunction can also give marriage uh, with a person who, who does not belong to the same community you could be marrying someone somebody else uh, other than from your own community other than from your own caste or faith all right so what is the remedy first let's begin with the health health concerns I think that is the major thing that anyone wants a remedy for so here you would have to watch out for your weight and what causes weight fattening food like excessive oil excessive cheese butter affinity to deep fried foods that's a big no and if you can keep this in check I think you've cracked many many things in life I don't think you really need a remedy for this conjunction okay if you have Venus and Saturn conjunction Saturn is hard work Saturn is also a karaka for career so you could get a wife who's always working who's got her career as the main focus probably cares less about anything else Saturn will also give some sort of fear of commitment in relationships to these people make them less expressive and emotive of love and affection and that could be a major barrier in relationships and if this conjunction is negative you can sometimes see that the spouse is also given to uh, laziness because Saturn is a slow moving planet he doesn't want to rush with things Saturn doesn't like change he's resistant to change okay remedy in any case for such a conjunction especially for fears remember what you fear the most will come to you or forefront and it will keep coming it will keep haunting you and so you have to tell your spouse to let go of that fear uh, and to let go means to confront it and not be afraid and the only way is to accept the way things are because of this conjunction it's okay to be emotionally vulnerable respect your wife's feelings if they're dropping their guard don't make fun of them okay and it's definitely and also you have to tell them it's okay to be emotionally honest you, they don't have to lie through their teeth just to please them so you need to instill the confidence in them to drop their guard and be emotionally vulnerable and emotionally honest and you will not hurt them 
in the event of them losing their guard. Okay, and when they start embracing these qualities, they will start slowly moving away from the clutches of Saturn. Other remedies would be self-help books, motivational books, reading uh, autobiographies of people who have been in tough situations, and that could help them set themselves with high standards of of moral and ethical behavior, and also give them an indomitable spirit. Okay, now Venus and Rahu conjunction. This this will give a very beautiful and attractive woman in your life. There could be something odd or strange about your spouse, something different that stands out from the rest of the crowd. They're probably also going to be secretive by nature. They're uh, going to accumulate a lot of money, a lot of wealth in their life. They're going to bring the bacon home and you will gain and enjoy many vehicles in their life because of them. You may buy two or three cars in your life. Uh, some of them even buy, uh, may buy luxury vehicles. And your wife will uh, be the fortunate one through whom you would get the bhagya or the, or the fortune of living in a very big apartment or building. And the negative side of this conjunction is that your wife would suffer due to excess heat. She could suffer due to gastric problems. So in that case, you need to remedy Rahu and Venus. And one of the best remedies here is that you will have to tell your spouse to seek contentment in life or go after the right things in life. Now it's okay to accumulate money or run after money or, uh, or chase businesses. Uh, but it's also important to understand that what we earn should be within the ambit of therma. Lying and cheating or exploiting people in your pursuit to make money will only add negative points to your karma. So please remember that. Venus and Ketu conjunction. Now this is a very difficult kind of conjunction because this will give your spouse the uh, inclination towards the path of liberation, but it will also give your spouse and interest in chasing business, in chasing money, in accumulating wealth, in buying properties. They're kind of opposing energies, and that's why it's very difficult for them to concentrate on any one of these aspects. So on one side, they have the need to focus on the material side of life. On the other, they're trying to move towards the path of liberation, and both are really uh, opposing sides. I'm sure you'd agree. You can't concentrate on both sides. So there may come a time in their life where they will have to choose between materialism and a simplistic life, which will uh, give them salvation. So when that time comes, you will see your spouse taking less interest in one of these aspects. Either she may completely become a materialistic person, or she may become someone who is a sadhu, a renunciate. Also, this conjunction can give a lot of expenses connected to celebration. You could be celebrating anniversaries, birthday parties, getting together for a reunion on weekends, on movies, on luxury events. Now, that's going to definitely burn a hole in your wallet. Expenses are going to be big time for people who have this conjunction. This combination can also make your spouse charitable. But again, you'll have to look at Jupiter's position for this. And if they're charitable, then that will give them good karmic points. Also with Venus and uh, Ketu conjunction, the love and affection between the husband and wife gets stifled to some extent. It gets suppressed because they've faced many failures in love previously and now they can't be sure if they're ready for another one and for another round of uh, love and care and losing their guard. And that's why this conjunction is so difficult to manage. All right. Now, what's the remedy for uh, Venus and Ketu? I think the best remedy would be to you'll have to find a way to connect with your wife and be open in your conversations with them and try to allay their fears with regards to relationship and 
and and show them that you're committed to them no matter what and once they earn that trust they're going to be giving their everything for you now let's look at conjunction in a woman's horoscope so if you have mars and sun conjunction your husband will be very powerful he will enjoy a lot of respect in society he'll be authoritative by nature he may also have ego problems and that is really the biggest issue with mars and sun conjunction for anybody but nonetheless they will gain from government sources they will make a lot of money they could even make a career out of uh, uh, serving the government but your your husband might suffer from intestinal disorders the combination can also burn your energies faster than you imagined it's going to ignite that fire uh, sometimes but most times this conjunction will bring about fatigue to your spouse and one of the remedies that i can think of is exercising or working out especially their core muscles and that could bring about strength and agility to withstand the physical demands of their life also for the mind i would suggest including of foods that bring a cooling effect on your body as well as theirs like consuming green leafy vegetables fenugreek papaya tender coconut water especially tender coconut water which is a wonderful wonderful remedy to dissipate the heat to bring about reproductive strength as well now if you have mars and moon conjunction your spouse will possess a very good disposition in general he will be very energetic will always be on the move he will have wide traveling prospects however for some people this conjunction may give negative effects of being interested in liquors being interested in sexual affairs with other women they could be very wandering by nature and the remedy of course will be for both moon and mars but more specifically you would have to consider remedies for the moon if you have a saturn aspecting on this conjunction then they could behave in a more dignified manner but but may also face false accusations now remedy is that uh, one of the remedies that i've read in a book in one of the scriptures uh, and it says that you you will have to limit the interaction of your spouse with other women unless they are his mother and or sister now that may that may not be so practical of course coming from the books especially in a, in today's age and uh a generation where the last thing that people want is to be tagged as a control freak nobody wants to be called that now what i suggest is that your spouse should incorporate traditional rituals in everyday life like like offering argya to surya performing surya namaskar maybe even perform yoga on a daily basis substituting jaggery for sugar in their diet worshiping god on a regular basis donating almonds to poor people and these are some of the remedies that needs to be done by your spouse but often we see that the spouse may not be interested in such things so now we have another problem what do we do so as a wife what you can do is that for and i'm going to give this remedy for both mars and moon conjunction as well as for mars and mercury conjunction and the remedy is to observe the karaka chaturthi festival the karaka chaturthi festival is also popularly known as the karwa chauth festival in india especially the north of india or maybe it's the west of india and a similar festival exists in south of india based on the tale of savitri and satyavan which has been mentioned in the epic mahabharata so if you if you observe that fast if you observe the rituals pertaining to that festival then you might in fact see a big change in the behavior of your husband now moving on if you have mars and mercury conjunction 
with Mars and Mercury conjunction, your husband will be inclined to do business. He'd be interested in entrepreneurship. Very obvious, right? But there's also uh, alongside that entrepreneurship and business mentality, he's going to be very commercial minded. He's going to have a commercial aspect or angle uh, in which he would think in respect of many, many things in life. So uh, he's going to be thinking what's in it for me when he does this or what's in it for me when I do that. How do I stand benefited by doing something? You know, so on and so forth. And that that is one thing that I've seen with many Mars and Mercury conjunctions. Also, he would be given to flattery and probably even have the propensity to per be persuaded by other women. So even this combination can give more than one wife to the native or even a secret girlfriend when this conjunction happens in the Scorpio sign or is in the 8th house. So the remedy is the same as Mars and Moon conjunction, so watch that part for uh, more information. Mars and Jupiter conjunction will give honors and respect to the husband. Husband could be a teacher or a professor or a trainer in life. And I have seen many fitness coaches, military trainers having this combination. And it's very unsurprising that they, they should be doing this, right? Husband can also be courageous but maybe a bit emotional by nature. This is a very odd thing for Mars and Jupiter conjunction, but that's what I've seen. They could be very emotional by nature, and that could be a turnoff for some people. Now, I don't see this planet-free combination requiring any remedy, but just in case that this combination happens to be in a Dustana house, like 6, 8, or 12 houses, then you need to also see if these planets are functionally benefic or malefic and having their placement there. If they're benefic and you're still having problems, especially for those suffering from liver complaints or those suffering from cholesterol or high blood pressure, cardiac issues, then you need to start remedying the house and not really the planets. And that's a bit too extensive to cover in this video. However, I do recommend you get your horoscope analyzed more holistically based on other planetary positions. Also, if you want a paid consultation, uh, please drop me an email and we'll see what remedies can be given. All right, for Mars and Venus conjunction, you will have, uh, you will see that your husband will gain prosperity after marriage. He's probably going to be having the same traits, same characteristics, same likes and dislikes as you are. And that might annoy you because you feel that you're not having complimenting aspects in life. But trust me, not having complimenting aspects in life can be beneficial for harmony. So it's not a bad combination, guys. Also, this combination can give the husband a pious nature. He's going to be very devoted. So uh, no remedy is required, I suppose. But if you're having trouble with excesses in life, and addictions in life that's something you need to work on and i'm not sure what kind of spiritual remedy i can give for a behavioral uh, problem you need to figure that out to see what changes you can bring to yourself but generally speaking because of venus you may be able to find a solution in uh, philosophy or in higher truths of life but uh, in any case, if you need a paid consultation, then do send me an email and I will look into your chart in the most holistic manner possible. And that's all I can say about that. Now, Mars and Saturn conjunction can give you a husband who has an average education. He may be a person who would be a quitter in the beginning of his job and later on after marriage gets to enjoy fair career prospects. He would enjoy prosperity after marriage. So if you're in a relationship with a partner who has this conjunction who's not doing well in terms of career, he might in fact start doing well after your marriage with him. But by all means, do check out 
other combinations in the chart before you say yes. All right. And this combination will also mean that your husband will have one elder brother. Remedies, of course, if you're already married and you need a remedy. And I would say you need to pacify the problem associated with opposing nature of these planets. So your husband would need to imbibe the qualities of Mars and Saturn together to see a beneficial result. And that can happen by uh, a spiritual remedy would be to chant the Hanuman Chalisa because Hanuman is considered both Mars for his speed and agility and Saturn for his wisdom, knowledge and devotion. Next we'll be looking at Mars and Rahu conjunction. This is classical Angarak Yoga, right? Mars is fire, Rahu is fuel and when they come together it's a big explosion. So there can be conflicts in your relationship. But husband will be generally a very good person, though sometimes emotional, he might worry about trivial matters and exaggerate them, which could cause problems. It is important to address these concerns early on to prevent them from escalating. Additionally, your husband may have a greedy nature, which could lead to suffering. This combination might also cause him to lack good judgment, both at, both at home and also at work and he may not have the discretion to take any decision in both places. Now the remedy I can think of for this problem uh, would be to be associated with satsang. So what is a satsang? Satsang is having good company, having the company of people who are uh, generally selfless by nature, who are less materialistic and more spiritual by nature. I know what some people may be thinking now, where on earth are we going to find people like that? Let me tell you that you will be surprised when you start searching for such people. There are many, many people out there who are very selfless by nature. Now, uh, moving on, let's look at Mars and Ketu conjunction. Now, again, this conjunction, the husband is most mostly most likely going to be disinvested in everyday mundane life he may not be like hey let's celebrate let's go out let's dine together and all that jazz now with that i mean you would know that he's definitely spiritually inclined he would speak about knowledge and liberation and all that jazz but at the same time somewhere deep down he would be someone who understands the limitation of otherworldly knowledge that can secure him his desires in everyday life. He understands that he cannot have a spiritual remedy for every problem and that could make him a bit materialistic by nature. But then this conjunction would make it extremely difficult to judge if the person right now is either focusing on the present or he's dreaming or he's in his own universe. But rest assured, he's someone who would try and balance both these aspects. Remedy. Well, uh, it's uh, it's really difficult to uh, give a remedy when we have Ketu in any conjunction. Uh, uh, very difficult to give practical remedies except for spiritual ones. And I think the key word here that the person would have to look for is balance. And the best of balance can only come through uh, Lord Vishnu and his consort Lakshmi. So worshipping Vishnu and Lakshmi can be a very beneficial uh, thing for his life. All right, we have come to the end of this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. I will see you all again with another new video very soon.